In this video, we're going to look at how to write to files and how to read from files in Java. So the first class that we're going to work with, we call the, the print writer class. So the print writer class is part of the java.io package. So we're going to import that one. So just by selecting it, it automatically imports at the top. And the print writer class will help us to create a new file and then write to a file. So I'm going to call this one the output file. And I'm going to say new print writer. And then what it accepts is basically the file name or the name for the file. And in this case, we're just going to call it output file. But remember, we're working with text files. So when we're working with text files, we need to add the extension .txt right at the end. So in Java, we can work with text files. You can work with data files as well. So for this example, just normal text files that you can open up with a text editor. Now, it gives us a problem here that we can fix with a simple try catch block, but we haven't done uh, exceptions yet. So for now, we're just going to add throws IO exception. So IO exception. That's also part of java.io and that exception there we're basically just telling this or telling the compiler that this method the main method are able to throw an io or input output exception so just add that at the top of your methods wherever you're using files so in this case we say print writer output file equals new print writer and then the name of the file so this essentially opens up the file it opens the file or create let's say create create the file and open the file so if the file does not exist it will create the file if the file exists it will replace the file okay so that's basically what this one line of coding is doing now if we want to write to the file we can just use the object so that's called output file dot and you can use either print or the print line method. So in this case, I'm going to use the print line method and I'm going to write one line of text to the file. So I will say something like this is line one. Go to the next line and we say output file dot print line again. And we can say this is line two. We can go to the next one output file dot print line. And we can say this is line three. So here we've basically created the new file called output file and we've written three lines to that file of text. So this is line one, line two and line three. Then the last step here is you must remember to close your file. So I'm going to say output file dot close and that basically saves then the data and closes my file for me. So there's basically three steps there. This is step number one. Create the file if it doesn't exist yet. If it exists, it will replace the file and that's the name for the file. Then also you can use one of the print or the print line methods on that object in order to write to your specific file. And then you can close the file when you're done working with the file. So let's quickly run this and see what happens if I run this now. So you'll see at the bottom, we did not print anything in the console. So obviously don't go and have a look at the console. But what happened now is we created an output file.txt file there. So you'll see as part of your project, you've now got output file.txt. And if I open it up, you can see that's exactly what was written into it. This is line one, line two, and line three. And you can see it there. I can add another line there, output file.print line. And I can say this is line four. And then run it again. And now running it again, if I go back to the file, you can see there's four lines now. Okay, so this is basically how you create a new file and how you write to that file. Right, let's take this same file now and let's try to read the data now from this file. So now I'm going to go to my next class there that's called reading from files. And I'm going to go into the main method there and see if we can read from this file that was created now. So for me to read from a file, I'm going to use the file class that's part of the java.io package. And I'm going to call this one file as well. And we're going to say equals new file. And then in brackets, I need to give the name of the file again. So the name of my file is output file. So I'm going to say output file dot txt. And because Java is case sensitive, make sure that you use output file exactly the same spelling. So this is the file I want to connect to. Now, before we start reading from the file, we must first check if that file does exist 
So we're going to use an exists method on the file object. And this method tells me whether the file that we're currently trying to connect to, if it actually exists or not. So if it exists, we're going to read from it. The else part there will be, it does not exist. So we can just display a J option pane. Let's say the message dialog there, second argument, uh, the file does not exist. Okay, so we can display that to the user. So now if the file exists, we're going to go into the if statement. So this is the first line. This line basically just makes a connection to the file so that we can start reading from it. But we cannot read by just using the file class there. So what we need is the scanner class. So remember that we used the scanner class a few videos back to actually read input from the keyboard uh, from directly from the user and what the user types on the keyboard. So now we're going to use the same scanner class with its same methods to actually read from a file. So we're going to say scanner, and I'm going to call this one input file now, equals new scanner. And now instead of saying system, system.in, if you remember correctly, if we try to read from the, from the keyboard, we said it's system.in there that we need to pass in there. But now we're not going to pass in system.in. I'm going to pass the file object there. So this file object has got a connection to this file. It does exist if it enters this if statement. And now we make a connection using the scanner class. And after this line of coding, we can actually now start reading data from the file. So again, it gives you a problem there that it talks about the file not found exception. So just for now, at the top of your main method, just at the end, we're going to add throws IO exception again. Exactly the same that we did there, throws I exception, we will do there as well. This is just telling the method that it could be that this specific class, the scanner class, when trying to read from the file, that file does not exist and it could throw an input output exception. In this specific case, it could be a file not found exception. Okay, so now all the errors are gone. So we've made the connection there with the file, output file.txt. We connected that to the scanner class so that we can start using the methods of the scanner class in order to read from the file. Okay, so now we know there's four lines of coding or four lines of text inside of that file. So we can say input file uh, dot, let me just use a system out print line here. So we're going to say system dot out dot print line. And we're going to say input file. Now the input file object there, we can use one of the next methods again. So if you're reading uh, Let's say a double from the file. If there's doubles in the file, you can use next double. If there's integers in the file, you can use next int. And remember then for text, it's the next line method. So by using the next line method here, I'm actually now reading the very first value from the file. So as soon as you open up the file by using file and scanner, we will have a file pointer that will point to the very first line. So what happens is as soon as you call the next line method on that object, it will extract the data from that line it's currently at and pass it back. In this case, we're just printing it out. And then what this next line method then do, it moves the pointer to the next line. So now that whenever you call next line again, it will again extract this one line and move to the next line. If you call it again, it will extract this line and move to the next line until it reaches the end of the file. So there's four lines of coding or four lines of text there. So I'm just going to use system out print line again. Uh, let me just copy them. I'm going to do the exact same thing all over again. So we're using one of the me next methods to actually extract the data of that one line and then move the pointer to the next line so that we can keep on extracting each value. So you agree then that we've got all four lines extracted here and it will be printed out to the console. So then just before we exit here, before we stop here, we must remember to also close the file. So I'm going to say input file, which is the scanner object, and we're going to say input file dot close, which closes the file for us. Now let's run this quickly. Now this one will print out to the console. So at the bottom, we will see uh, those lines of coding now if it gets it. Let me just run it again. I think it was still the previous one running. Okay, there we go. So you can see there, this is line one, this is line two, this is line three, this is line four. So basically what we did there, we made a connection to output file.txt, this one, and we started reading from it. 
by using the scanner class and one of the methods of the scanner class. So it's either one of the next methods, it's either next line, next double, next int, and you can read data from a file using that next method. Now one important thing, if I add one other line there to extract another line, so we've, we've got one, two, three, four, five times we're extracting data from there, but there's not, there isn't five lines there to extract, then that will give us a problem. So if we run this now, you will see that it gives us an exception that says no such element exception, no line found. So basically what happened now, when it reached the end of this and we call next line again, then there's nothing in that line to read anymore. It's an empty line or basically the end of the file. And that's why it gives us this exception because we're trying to read data where no data exists. So that could be problematic for us in our pro program. So basically, we should not do it like I've done it here. The best way to do this is to use a while loop to run through every element in the file until we get to the very last line in the file. So to do this, we've got uh, the scanner class that's got a method called hasNext. So this hasNext method will check whether you reach the end of the file or not. So now again, I can go and say system.out.println and I will print out input file dot next line again. So I'm extracting one line from the file and I'm printing it out. But now what's going to happen here? Remember there we make the connection to the file and we open up the file. Now it goes into the while loop. It checks where the pointer is currently at. So right at the start when you open up the file your pointer will be at line one. So then the has next method checks, it sees that the point is at line one, there is data to read, so it allows you to go into the while loop. And we print out input file.nextline. Input file.nextline will go, it will extract, this is line one, and it will move the pointer to the next line. Now if the point is at the next line, it goes back to the loop again, the has, has next method sees that there is still data in that line, so it allows you to go into the loop, we print again input file dot next line. Input file dot next line will read the second line there and move the pointer to the third line. Now it goes back to the loop again. Has next method sees okay there is still data in that one line, so it will allow you to go into the loop, and we call next line again. When calling next line again, it extracts this line and it goes to the next one. Now again in the loop, has next method sees okay there is some data in that line. It allows us back again. Input file dot next line runs again. It extracts this one line that says this is line 4 and it moves to the end of the file. So now when the has next method tests again, it will see that we are we are at the end of the file and it will stop the loop from executing, which means this last part will not run again, which will give us that exception. So this is a way to actually skip that exception of getting to the end of the file and you don't know that you're at the end of the file. So this is a nice way of extracting data from a file where you do not know how many lines of text or numbers or whatever is in that file. So that's the while loop. Remember, a while loop needs three parts. Basically, you need to initialize the loop control variable. So the loop control variable here could be the pointer. So these two lines will move the pointer, open up the file and move the pointer there. And then we're testing there in the has next method, we're testing for that pointer. Where's the pointer? It's at a, at a line with data, yes or no. And then how do we increment? By using one of the next methods. So it's either next line or next int or next double that will move the pointer to the next line, to the next line, to the next line until it reaches the end of the file and then the loop will stop. Okay, so let's run this application quickly and see if it gives us the same output that we had previously. And you can see there it gives us all five lines, all four lines. I can also add some more lines there. This is line five. I can also say this is line six and carry on. And every time I run it, it should basically read those lines also from the file and show me the results. Okay, so let's try another example. So I'm going to remove, let's, let's remove this part there where we print out. And let's try and work with a different type of file. So instead of using uh, text there, let's just use numbers. So I'm going to use 5, 10, 15, 20, 
25, 30. And we can carry on entering numbers here. We could have a thousand numbers here if, if, if you want to. Okay, so what I want to do in this example is to work out the average of these numbers in the file. Now, there could be a thousand numbers in this file. I'm just taking an example of, of taking six of the, of the values. So what we can do then is to also read from the file. So we make the connection to the file, output file.txt. We will uh, use the scanner class and its methods to read the data. But now, because we're going to use or work out the average, I will need some variables. So let's have an integer as a sum, which will start the sum at zero. So just to add all those numbers, because to get the average, you need to sum all the values and then divide by the number of values. So we will need some sort of a counter there else as well uh, that we will need to keep track of to count how many values are in the file. That's the counter. And then we can work out the average by using an average variable there. Okay, so what we want to do then in the file, we open up the file, that's the file name. We connect it to the scanner class and now in the while loop, we can start reading. So I'm gonna say sum equals the previous value of sum plus now a line from the file. So I want to get the five and then the 10 and then the 15 and so forth. And because these are integer values, I can then go and say, take input file dot next int instead of next line. So now I'm reading an integer from the file. That integer will be added to the sum and saved back to sum. So the sum is currently at zero. So the very first time this loop runs, zero plus the first value will be five and the sum will then be five. The next time the loop runs, it will be five plus whatever is the next one, the 10. So that will be 15 then saved in sum. And so it will continue and continue and continue until we are done with the while loop and we are at the end of the file and we cannot read anymore. Okay, so that will be the sum. Now, after we have the sum, we also need to somewhere just count how many times we are running this loop because counting every time the loop runs will basically be counting how many values there are. So we can see now, obviously, there's six values, but you won't know how many values there are if there's more than a thousand, for example, in a file. You can't go and count them. So by using this counter inside of the loop, we will actually get the sum of all the values and how many values there are. And then we can work out the average. So the average will basically be the sum of all the values divided by the number of values, which will be the count. Just remember that we are dealing, dealing with two integers here, both of them declared as integers. So we could get a problem here with integer division. So just cast one of the two or change one of the two to a double. Right, and so now we can display this to the user. So I'm going to use a J option pane and we're going to say show message dialog. First argument, the null, to be in the middle of the screen. Let's go to a new line for the message. And we will say something like, uh, let's say, sum of all values. And then we can display the sum. Then I'll have a new line character there, which is just a backslash, backslash in. And then we're going to go to a new line in the J option pane. And then the next line, we will say, uh, the number of values and the number of values will be the count then a new line again and then we will say the average is and then show the average okay so that's how we can do do one uh, printout but three different lines in your message dialog so let's run this one quickly Right, and you can see it gives me the sum of all the values is 105, the number of the values is 6, and the average is 17.5. So there were 6 values there, let's change it, let's add a 35 there as well and run it again. So it will then read the 35 as part of the data, and it will tell me the sum of all the values is now 140, and this number of values 7, and the average is 140 divided by 7, which will give me 20.